everybody, Wannabe Reviewer here, and welcome back to the Wannabe Podcast, episode 40. Before we begin this week's podcast, I just had a few, like, announcements slash shoutouts that I wanted to make, or I guess as Ben from the Cadaver Club would call it, I have a few shouties to do. That's right, Ben. I think it's a fun word to use, so there you go. But, uh, <laughs> that aside, yeah, I have a few shouties to make. Uh, the first thing I wanted to say is that Slim over from the Galactic Happy Hour, who, as you guys might remember, I actually had on a couple weeks ago, he released a video not too long ago uh, stating that his channel is now one year old. So I think that's great. I think the fact that it's already been like a year that he's been on, even though I haven't known him the whole time, I think that's awesome. I think it's great that you know, in a year, I feel like he's made some good content. So like good for him. And all I can say is that I wish him the best. I hope that he is able to celebrate many more YouTube anniversaries. I think that'd be awesome. And so just really quick, you know, I just thought I'd, you know, put that out there because, you know, uh, uh, every year that you spend on YouTube, it's nice, you know, it's a big deal. So I think Slim's awesome. So I just want to throw that out there. Uh, another thing that I want to talk about really quickly is that I've also mentioned a channel called Charific a few times. And yeah, Charific, for anyone who doesn't know or needs like a quick recap, he's a channel where he does all sorts of Let's Plays on like Pokemon games, especially like ROM hacks, as well as he has a uh, Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess Let's Play that he's currently doing. And Charific's a really good guy. I think he's a lot of fun, really supportive, you know, always leaving comments on all my videos, that sort of thing. And and I recently did a collab with him. Uh, basically, he approached me one day. He says that he wants to do a like movie review of each of the Pokemon films. And I thought that sounded like a fun idea. And so I agreed. And yeah, we covered Pokemon, the first movie, Mewtwo Strikes Back. We, you know, covered that like a little while ago and he's been like uploading them. And yeah, that first movie, our first review, he cut it down into three parts. And part three just went up up like a couple of days ago or whatever and so yeah i would say go check it out you know uh if you don't know how to get to his channel i actually put like a little trailer type of video on my channel and i have a link to his channel in the description so if you want to check that out see if it seems like it's your thing and then go over to his channel and check that out i would appreciate it you know i think it'd be really awesome uh, with that being said, though, I had a pretty busy week. I think I did quite a bit. And there are a lot of news stories that even if they're kind of short, there's still like a lot to go over. So with that being said, you know, let's transfer over to the podcast and let's get started with my week, I guess. Uh, when it comes to my week, as always, I watched quite a bit of anime. And the first thing that I want to talk about is the show Given. Uh, I talked about Given last week. I mentioned that it was the show that based on like the description and like the poster image or whatever, I thought it was going to be a lot like Beck Mongolian Chop Squad. And yeah, as I've been watching it, while it still has some of those Beck vibes, I feel like it's becoming less of a Beck type show and more like maybe... Your Lie in April, I guess, you know, because it does have some funny moments and stuff. I do feel like it's a more mellow series. OK, so, you know, for anyone who needs like a quick recap, uh, the main character is this guy. He's a guitarist. He's part of a band with like two college students. One day he runs into this kid. Uh, this kid wants him to teach him how to play guitar. And so he eventually gives in, starts teaching him guitar. At the end of the second episode, he finds out that this protege of his can sing and he asks him to join his band. When we start at the beginning of episode three, uh, we find out that the protege said no, but he doesn't really explain why, you know, and he's kind of avoiding the main character. So the main character, basically throughout this, uh, the episode, he's kind of trying to like track down the protege, kind of convince him to join the band. He's kind of trying to see if he can make him open up about why he doesn't want to join the band, that sort of thing. And so that's really interesting, you know? I thought that it was kind of interesting, like, okay, why does he want to join the band? He obviously likes music, so like, what's his deal? However, the series gets even more interesting because we see that at one point, like towards the end, Someone recognizes the protege kid on the street 
And he's like, oh, it's you. Where did you go? It's like you fell off the face of the earth. I haven't seen you in forever. And he notices that the protege, I, I forget his name, but he's like carrying like his guitar case. And he even says like, oh, is that such and such person's guitar? You know, like he's really questioning him, which is like really interesting. And we can tell that the protege kid, he's like very upset by all this and he runs away. And so, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I just find that I, I find the series really interesting. I think like the relationship between like the main character and this protege, how they're kind of, you know, bonding a little bit, how they're trying to form a band, how this protege kid. I mean, there's some reason that he's kind of always looking kind of depressed. There's some sort of story of why he's carrying that guitar. Where did he get it from? Why does his friend say you kind of fell off the face of the earth? That sort of thing. Like, there's definitely something there. And besides that, there's just, like, the whole band aspect of them trying to, like, make a band, too. So, like I said, it's less Beck than I thought it was going to be. But, yeah, just because it's not what I expected doesn't mean it's bad. I think so far this series has been really good. I'm definitely very curious and very, you know, I don't know. I'm just really invested because I want to know what's going on. And yeah, I'm just hoping that it's a story that pays off. You know, I think it's going to be a very emotional story. And so as of right now, I've watched three episodes. I think it's really good. It is a little like somber. It's a bit mellow. But, you know, if you like like drama type, like like slower anime, I think you'll enjoy it. And yeah, I mean, I've said it before, it's on Crunchyroll. So hopefully, you know, it's available in your region or whatever, but I recommend it. I think it's really good so far. I'm hoping that it continues to be good as it goes forward. But yeah, if it sounds interesting, I would say give it a shot, check it out. So there you go. Uh, moving on, I mentioned this anime I mean, last week, maybe in the week before, but yeah, I've continued to watch Magical Senpai and I've got to say that I'm really enjoying it. I mean, does it have like deep characters or a deep plot? No. Is it very like fan servicey and kind of trashy? Yeah. Is it kind of dumb sometimes with its humor? Also, yeah. But I don't know. I mean, there's just something I really enjoy about it. I mean, I think it's just the fact that it's such an easy watch. I think the humor is a like really fun, easy, dumb humor, I guess. And I don't know. I mean, I think people don't really give it credit. I think the relationship between the magical senpai magician girl and the assistant, like, I do think they have like a fun dynamic going on. I think it is kind of cute how uh, he seems kind of like annoyed with her. And he doesn't really want to be in her club. But at the same time, you know, at the end of episode four, he kind of had a chance to like leave her alone and like not be part of her club but he came back because i guess he didn't want to see her sad and i think he does kind of enjoy her antics and likewise i just think it's kind of cute how you know you can tell that she kind of wants friends and she's like really latched onto him i mean she might even have like a bit of a crush on him you know it's kind of implied but i don't know i mean it's not the best anime but i do think it's really fun so you know as i said before you know if you enjoy stuff that's like a really easy watch it's the kind of thing you can turn your brain off you know and just watch it and have fun maybe enjoy a little bit of fan service i think you'll like it you know i think it's a really fun little series and like i said i even think that the dynamics are kind of cute so you know same as given it's available on crunchyroll there are four episodes out as of me recording this so if that sounds interesting to you if it's something like something you'd be into i'd say check it out so there you go moving on this next one i mean wow it, it, it definitely took a turn is I guess the best way to describe it. Uh, I am of course talking about Do You Love Your Mom and her two hit multi-target attacks. And yeah, I mean, for anyone who remembers last week, I said that it had an interesting premise, I think, where basically it's about this kid that he doesn't have the best relationship with his mom. He kind of ignores her. He's kind of mean to her. He gets sent to a video game world for whatever reason she gets sent there too. And it seems like it's implied that it's to improve their relationship. So they can bond, you know, while they're adventuring. And so when I saw this, you know, I said it was an interesting premise. And I thought it seemed really wholesome, you know, how the mom's like kind of ditzy and she's a little overbearing and she's like really OP. And so that kind of embarrasses him. Like, I don't know. I thought it seemed cute. I thought it seemed like a fun idea. And I thought that the premise was interesting. Uh, the anime took a bit of a turn now. You know, I've watched up to episode three because it definitely is looking for any chance it has to like have her expose herself to him like it's just so weird how much they're pushing it 
Uh, like in episode two, for instance, there's a there's a part where they're fighting some sort of monster and it has like an acid attack. So, of course, it uses its acid on her clothes. And so the mom ends up naked in front of the son. Uh, in episode three, she keeps using all these like outfits that are like, you know, basically bikinis and like underwear and stuff. And she keeps trying them on. And he keeps going, mom, I don't want to see this. So I don't know. I guess what I'm trying to say it's still an interesting premise. It does still have like the nice, wholesome thing, I guess, about them trying to like bond as they're adventuring and they're picking up like a couple of uh, party members along the way. And the party members seem like they have some stuff going on. One of them definitely, you know, she seems like she's a bit lonely and she's kind of looking for that family dynamic, that sort of thing. And so it is cute to see how she acts like as a mom to everyone in the party. But still, you know, if you're not into the fan service or you're not at all into like anything that has any trace of like incesty stuff, you'll probably want to avoid this because I'm guessing that they're going to make more of those jokes in the future, you know? But uh, if you don't mind it and if you don't care about fan service, at least they don't take it too far. It seems like it's more like for laughs. It's not like, you know, like, oh, it's implied. They like the mom and the son, they want to like sleep together and it's like, creepy or whatever. Then I mean, more power to you. But uh, yeah, you know, so there's, you know, it's kind of mixed, you know, I think some people like it. I, I think others definitely won't. But uh, yeah, if anything that I've talked about seems interesting to you, hey, you know, I'm not judging, then I would say check it out, you know. Similar to the other series, it's also available on Crunchyroll and there are three episodes out right now. So, you know, I think right now is a good time as any to jump in, you know, if you're interested. So there you go. Finally, the last anime that I watched that this one's been gone for a while and it's been gone because of a new story that I'm going to talk about a little bit later. But uh, I finally watched episode three of Fire Force. And yeah, I think this con this series continues to be really interesting uh, for anyone who, you know, doesn't remember since I haven't talked about it in a while. Fire Force is the series that has to do with uh, like an alternate world where firefighters are basically like firefighters slash exorcists basically in this world this weird like sun religion has like a really big presence and in this world humans like spontaneously combust and can become uh fire demons they have to be defeated by the fire force and so episode three was really interesting basically the main character runs into somebody who claims to know about his past they claim to know all about him and what really happened they tell him not to you know uh, trust the fire force they kind of tell him that there's something going on you know more than meets the eye and so yeah i mean i think it's it's pretty good so far you know i think if you're into shonen anime or like the kind of anime where you know like there's people with powers and they fight creatures that sort of thing i think you'll like this i think you know like all of the moves they have are really interesting i think the way everyone has like a unique move set having to do with like pyrokinesis i think it's really cool and i definitely think that the, the mystery of like okay what happened to the main character in his past what's the real story there and what's going on with like the world at large you know like why is there like the sun religion why do humans combust like what is the government hiding i do think it's really interesting and so yeah you know as of right now i recommend it i think it looks like an interesting series i think that there's definitely going to be some cool action and i think it's going to be kind of interesting hopefully to see what's really going on you know in the world so yeah as of right now i recommend it i think it looks really interesting i think it looks fun so same as all the other anime it's on crunchy roll it looks Looks like it's finally back you know it had taken a bit of a hiatus i guess like for like a week or two but it is back now and so if it seems interesting go check it out you know that's all i can really say for right now Alrighty, moving on to TV series. Last week I mentioned that I had started, I think I don't remember if I had started or if I was about to start watching Stranger Things season three. I might have watched like an episode or two, I don't really remember. Regardless, I watched all eight episodes of the season and overall, I guess I would say I enjoyed it, you know? Like, I wouldn't say it's a perfect season. I do think there was kind of some things I didn't like, you know? But overall, I do think it's a really fun season. I think my favorite part continues to be Steve and uh, Dustin. I think Steve and Dustin are like my favorite characters. I think their like dynamic is really fun. I think that that girl that they added Robin, I thought that her like little team up with Steve and Dustin, I thought that was awesome. 
I think that like she's like really snarky and like really fun. She definitely doesn't take any crap from people, which I thought was really cool. And yeah, I, I mean, I would say that was probably my favorite part of the, the season. I think their dynamic and the way they're getting stuff done was really cool. Likewise, I actually really enjoyed Jonathan and Nancy's story. Like, while it wasn't perfect, I thought it was kind of cool seeing how, you know, they work for, like, this newspaper now, and it looks like they're always being talked like, down upon, especially Nancy, because of how she's a girl. So I thought it was kind of interesting seeing them, you know, basically play, like, junior detective, and they're investigating things on their own, that sort of thing. I thought that dynamic was kind of fun, and I think seeing their continued romance, you know, I mean, it works well enough, I think, you know, I, I think it's fine. But yeah, there was stuff I didn't like about the season. Like, I thought that the fact that, uh, you know, in prior seasons, the story was, like, very local. And it was about, like, the government messing with this small town. And so it was up to these residents to figure out the issue of their town, you know? Like, it was more small scale. And in this season, it's all about, like, the Russians. And they're trying to, like, open a portal to the Upside Down. But apparently, you know, like, it doesn't work in Russia. So they come to, like, the town of Stranger Things. And, the go uh, you know, the Russian government's involved. They have, like, an army and a secret laboratory. And, like, I don't know. I just thought it was a little too much. I thought that was a little too extreme i think the fact that like the mayor's colluding with uh the russians and there's this guy that he talks to that is basically like a terminator ripoff i mean the guy even looks like arnold the, the fact that he's like this hitman that silences people and goes after hopper you know i thought that was a little extreme i thought that was a little silly um so that was like one thing i didn't like you know uh likewise i thought the rest of the kids outside of dustin i thought they were all kind of lame this season i feel like they didn't really do much you know, like all we really see them do is kind of deal with like relationship drama, which I thought was kind of lame, you know, like because they Mike and Elle are a, are, are a couple, uh, Lucas and Max are a couple. And so there's a lot of, you know, uh, Mike, you know, he, he stops talking to Elle because Hopper threatens him. And so there's like the drama of them, like almost breaking up and Lucas and Max, you know, like they're trying to give advice to each of the people. And I don't know. I just thought it was kind of a mess. I thought it was kind of dumb. I didn't really enjoy the relationship drama that much you know i thought it was a little bit boring so i was disappointed in that but i don't know you know like i said i wouldn't think it's a terrible season i do think the villain and how they're taking over the town like what they're doing i thought that was really interesting i thought it had like the right like gross slash creepiness factor you know i thought that was really cool i thought that like i said the steve robin dustin dynamic i thought that was really fun and yeah, I, I overall did enjoy the Jonathan, Nancy, you know, plain detective thing too. Honestly, I thought they were a little more interesting than Hopper and um, Joyce. I thought Hopper and Joyce were a little bit annoying this season too. I thought it was more interesting to follow Jonathan and Nancy, honestly. So yeah, overall, you know, wasn't the best season, but I wouldn't say it was like trash either. I would give it maybe like a 7 out of 10, you know, it, it, it was fine, I guess. But uh, yeah, you know, if you haven't checked it out, I would say that it is still worth watching, especially for like Steve and Dustin and Robin. I thought they were really fun. So if you haven't watched it, there you go. You know, I think I think it's worth checking out, at least for them, you know. And hey, you know, maybe you'll have a different opinion. Maybe you'll enjoy it more than I did. So, you know, there's always that. So, yeah. Finally, when it comes to video games, recently I've really gotten into playing Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth. Uh, I don't know why I just got into it all of a sudden. It's like the weirdest thing. I bought this game, I want to say like a year ago. Uh, you know, I was at GameStop one day and I saw it was like $20. So I decided to pick it up. But yeah, for whatever reason, I just never popped it in, never played it before. It's been sitting on my shelf, like I said, for like a year. And then out of nowhere, I just really had an urge to play it. I just decided to give it a chance. And yeah, I mean, I've really enjoyed it so far. You know, I'm really glad that I started playing it. Uh, I don't really want to talk about it too much, you know, right now, because I do want to get further into it. And I am considering maybe doing like a review on it, you know, but I guess all I can really say is that I'm really enjoying it so far. It's a JRPG. RPG that kind of reminds me of like Persona 5, oddly enough. 
Uh, because yeah, I don't know. I mean, like in Persona 5, it's all about like there's like different like dimensions, right? There's like the real world and there's like a subconscious world. In the subconscious world, you can use creatures to fight. Uh, you're freeing people from like the possession of like the creatures. Uh, you're solving like the mystery of like what's happening. Like there's a bigger conspiracy, that sort of thing. And the way you mess with the monsters is that, you know, each monster has different attributes and skills, that sort of thing. You can can level them up you can combine to make stronger ones that sort of thing when it comes to digimon cyber sleuth very similar there's a real world and there's the digital world uh when you're in the digital world you can use creatures to fight uh you're investigating because there's some sort of like a bigger story going on sometimes you know you run into people who are uh like possessed slash like teaming up with digimon and so you're trying to like free them or whatever and restore them to normal uh similar to persona there's all sorts of creatures you can use they all have their different skills and attributes you can level them up you can combine to make uh stronger creatures that sort of thing so it's not a perfect one for one especially because digimon doesn't have all the like uh like the social aspects you know like you don't really like bond with people and like level up your like relationship with them likewise you know there's not really any like skill boosts or anything but i don't know it still reminds me enough of persona you know i think it has very similar gameplay mechanics and yeah i really hope to talk about it you know in the future hopefully a little more coherently but all i really will say is that at the moment i'm really glad i played it i'm really enjoying it so far and as of right now you know i'm like a few chapters in maybe like i want to say like 15 hours into the game i do recommend it you know i think it's really fun so far so yeah like i said uh hopefully in the future i can talk about it more but for now i just wanted to report that i've been playing this game i've been really obsessed with it i think it's really fun so as of right now i do recommend it so there you go all right, and with that being said, that basically does it for my week. I don't know. I mean, I feel like I had a really fulfilling week. You know, I've watched a lot of things, played a game I've really enjoyed, that sort of thing. So hopefully you guys enjoyed, you know, listening to me talk about that. Hopefully I talked about something that maybe you guys are interested in, you know, that sort of thing. But yeah, like I said, you know, hopefully I continue to play Digimon and could talk about it in the future, that sort of thing. But uh, for now, you know, with that out of the way, I do want to transfer over to the news. And I will admit, most of the news stories are kind of short, but I still think they have some info that's like really interesting to talk about, you know? So yeah, when it comes to the first news story, this is an interesting one because it's actually an update of a news story that I was planning to talk about, all right? So as the title of the article states, Joy-Con Drift will be fixed for free. Nintendo Internal Memo states. So basically, for those of you who don't know it, as I said, there was a news story, I want to say it was like late last week, where basically, for whatever reason, I think it might be because of how Nintendo's talking about like its new Switch models and like new Joy-Cons in different colors, that sort of thing. But for whatever reason, recently, people were like really mad at Nintendo because of the whole Joy-Con issue. Because I don't know if you guys have like a Switch or you've heard about it, but there's like a really high chance that if you have a Switch, one or maybe even both Joy-Cons will have this issue called drift, where basically even when you're not touching the controller, the system thinks that you're using it. And so like the character will move like slowly like across the screen or like the camera will move, that sort of thing. Uh, it's really annoying. You know, I have that issue. My left Joy-Con for months, it's been doing that. It's annoying, right? And so for whatever reason, like I said, people got very vocal about it enough that this uh, law firm was saying that it was going to file a lawsuit against Nintendo. I think they call it like a class action lawsuit or whatever. And so, yeah, like I said, I was going to report on that story because I thought that was really interesting. Uh, before I got to it, though, we had this update where I guess Nintendo is trying to avoid the lawsuit and I guess they're trying to stay on people's good side. So what they've said is that if you already paid for Nintendo to like uh, fix the drift issue on your Joy-Con, they'll give you a refund. And if you haven't tried it yet, but you're thinking of sending your Joy-Con in so they can fix the issue, they'll actually like do it for you for free. 
So, yeah, I mean, that's kind of cool, you know? Uh, like, as it says right here, you know, I'm just going to read this section really quick. Uh, it's, well, I'm not going to read it word for word. I'm just going to kind of, like, paraphrase. But it says that, yeah, there's, like, this memo that got, I guess you can call it, like, leaked by an anonymous source. And it says that, yeah, uh, customers, like, no longer have to show their proof of purchase. Uh, they don't even have to, like, talk about warranty or anything. Basically, you just talk to a customer service representative. They'll troubleshoot you through you know a few solutions and if it doesn't work then they'll refer you over to repairs and yeah i mean they'll do the fix for free and if you already got it fixed in the past and you want a refund basically all they have to do is confirm the prior repair and then they'll send you a refund so it seems like it's a really easy process which is nice um on the one hand i do think it's kind of crappy that this issue has been going on like for a long time and and, you know, for like the longest time, Nintendo wasn't addressing it. I feel like part of why they're addressing it now is to cover their own asses, you know? I do think that's kind of unfortunate. And I do think it's a bit scummy, you know? That if someone hadn't talked about it and made it such a big deal, like, I honestly think Nintendo wouldn't have said anything. Like, I think that's kind of crappy, right? But, you know, on the other hand, I am glad that they're finally addressing it. And I am glad that they're doing it for free. Because, you know, worst case scenario, they could have either, like, stayed quiet about it, or they could have said, you know, like, oh, man, we're so sorry, blah, 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 uh, we'll fix them for a discount, you know? Like, they could have gone that route. So the fact that they are fixing it for free and issuing refunds for people who already fixed it, like, it's not the best, you know? Like I said, I do feel like it's kind of only, like, because they're looking out for their own interest, but all the same, you know, I guess I am glad that they're addressing it, and I am glad that it's for free. So, yeah, like I said, not much of a story there, you know, because, you know, I feel like the other story was the bigger one. And since then, you know, this is kind of like the resolution. But all the same, I just wanted to share this. Uh, personally, I'm going to look into it because I do have that left Joy-Con that's always drifting. And I am interested in fixing it now that I know it's free. And likewise, you know, I just thought I'd throw that out there that if you have a Switch and you've been having the same issue, then, you know, likewise, you might want to look into this, you know. Uh, the link will be in the description below that will lead to the article that talks about it so you know you might want to read up on it and you know if you have the issue you might want to look into it so i thought it was an interesting story i think it's good that there's an option now so like i said i'm gonna look into it and if you've had a problem with your switch hopefully you will too so there you go Moving on, this next one, like I said, not too much of a big news story, but still something that piqued my interest because this is about a series that I am really fond of. So as the title of the article states, Shigesato It Toys Company says that Mother 4 is still open for others to make it. So for those of you who don't know, the Mother series, also known as Earthbound, outside of Japan, basically it's like this little JRPG series that, like, I don't know, I mean, I guess the most famous out of the games is Earthbound. Earthbound is the game that Ness comes from, you know, he's a fighter in Smash Bros. Then Mother 3, that was a Game Boy Advance game. That's the game that Lucas comes from, who is also, you know, a Super Smash Bros. character. And, and yeah, they're like these really charming little, like, JRPGs, you know, um, like, like Mother 3, uh, that game is like really sad. It goes like some crazy places near the end. I think it's a really well-made game. And you know, it's a shame that it's never been like officially released. People have only played the ROMs, but you know, it's it's a really good game. And Earthbound, I would say that's probably one of my favorite games ever. You know, like I've played it like a few times. I've done something that I never really do where I've gotten all my characters like maxed out and like, I don't know. I mean, I just love that game, right? And so, like I said, I love the series. And so it got my attention because, yeah, basically, you know, in the article, they have some highlights from an interview that they had. And yeah, basically the people behind the Mother series, they're not against fans making a Mother 4. You know, like for whatever reason, I guess the director isn't really interested in making games, which I think makes sense because I think I've read somewhere that he's not really much of a game director. He like does more of like behind the scenes stuff, you know, but apparently he doesn't mind someone else making it. And like I said, not much of a story there. I mean, it's just like an excerpt from an interview, but I'm really hoping that anyone who has 
fan games that they love to make, anyone who maybe has been working like on a mother spiritual successor or something. I'm hoping that this is the green light they needed to make Mother 4. And yeah, I mean, I'm going to keep an eye out. I'm hoping that, you know, this encourages people to make a Mother 4. And yeah, if you're a fan of the Mother series, then I would suggest doing the same, you know, just keep an eye out. And hopefully in the future, somebody makes some sort of a Mother 4 game. So yeah, there you go. Finally, if you've ever played the series called Nights into Dreams back on like the, you know, Sega stuff, like what is it? I think it was like on the Sega Saturn. I think they then ported it to like the Wii and like other systems, you know, that good stuff. As the article states, Sega Games has filed a trademark for Knight's Dream Wheel. And whether that will be like a mobile game, a pachinko slot, a new title, nobody knows yet. But it is really exciting to think that it could be a new entry in the series. Because, you know, as I've been talking about like in recent weeks and stuff, a lot of stuff that I was like, hey, you know, I hope it makes a comeback in that um, seven Sega franchises that I'm hoping I will get revived video I made. You know, I mentioned that I would love to see the return of Space Channel 5. Well, it hasn't made like an official return yet, it is getting like a sort of like VR game slash experience. So I would say that's something. Uh, I thought that it would be cool to see the return of Monkey Ball. Sure enough, it's not a new entry in the series, but we are getting a nice like HD, like remaster port sort of thing for all consoles later this year. Uh, likewise, you know, I had said that it would be cool to see Panzer Dragoon make some sort of a comeback. And sure enough, you know, at E3, they mentioned that they're going to make a like remake of the first game and the second game. So like that's making a comeback. So yeah, I mean, while none of them are getting new entries quite yet, I do feel like that could lead to new entries in the near future. And so yeah, I mean, I'm just hoping that it's the same thing for Knights, you know? I'm hoping that this isn't a mobile game, isn't a pachinko slot. I'm really hoping that it is a new entry in the series. So that's exciting, you know? Uh, of course, you know, all of that speculation. If you look in the comments, a lot of people are worried that it's gonna be like a pachinko or like a, a mobile game, but there is someone that's saying like, no, if you uh, translate the Japanese, it says uh, consoles or whatever. So people are already like forming theories and rumors and that sort of thing. But still, you know, if you enjoy Sega games, if you have any love for Nights Into Dreams, the good news is that it is in the news there is something happening with it and so hopefully you know in the near future hopefully we find out what this project is and hopefully it is a new game so i would say you know keep an eye out for it and you know let's hope for the best moving on to movie news this next news story is a big one uh, I'm not going to go too in depth about it, you know, because I will link it in the description below so you can look at like all the information yourself and watch like the trailers or clips, whatever you want to call them. But uh, basically during San Diego Comic-Con, uh, Marvel had this huge panel where they were talking about a bunch of stuff that they're planning for phase four and like beyond, you know. And so briefly, I just kind of want to touch upon some of the stuff. Maybe describe a little bit of like what each thing's supposed to be. But like I said, I'm not going to go too in depth about it because I think it is something that, you know, it's better if you guys read it for yourself, you know. But uh, yeah, so going forward, Marvel has announced The Eternals, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, WandaVision, Loki, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, What If, Hawkeye, Thor Love and Thunder, Black Widow, and Blade. Uh, Eternals, I don't really know much about the Eternals. All I know is that they're supposed to be like a big team of like cosmic entities or whatever. And that's slated for November 6th, 2020. So that's interesting, I guess. Uh, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, it's supposed to uh, start streaming fall 2020 for Disney+. Plus. Basically, it's supposed to be a TV show that follows uh, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And of course, you know, if you watched Endgame, you know, spoilers, the Falcon is actually the new Captain America. So I'm guessing it's going to be interesting to see, you know, they're going to have adventures where I guess Falcon is going to try to take up the mantle and it'll be about them, you know, fighting crime and stuff. So we'll see how it goes. But yeah, that's supposed to be a TV show on Disney+. Plus. 
Uh, moving on, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Uh, it's slated for February 21st, 2021. And from what I read up about it, it's supposed to be about like an Asian martial artist. I think I read that his power is that he can like make like like duplicates of himself or something like that, if I read it right. And so it's very much, you know, like supernatural, like martial arts. And so that seems pretty cool, you know, getting our first Asian lead. It seems pretty cool that it's going to be, you know, like a martial arts movie. And what's supposed to be special about it is that it says, and the legend of the Ten Rings, the Ten Rings is supposed to be uh, a reference to the Mandarin, which in Iron Man 3, they had said that the villain was going to be the Mandarin and everyone thought it was going to be Ben Kingsley. And he was going to be like this supernatural entity or whatever. Uh, if you've watched Iron Man 3, though, as you know, that was actually a red herring. The actual Mandarin supposedly ended up being like this, this guy that was Man of Tony. And he had like these tattoos and these weird powers, blah, blah, blah. But uh, supposedly what I've heard is going on in the background is that even though that guy was calling himself the Mandarin, he himself is also not the Mandarin. He's also just kind of using the name as like a tribute to the actual supernatural guy. And so Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, it might finally bring in the real Mandarin and the actual like supernatural like power of the rings or whatever. So I don't know. I mean, it sounds interesting. I think su supernatural martial arts, there's definitely something there. You know, I, I think those movies are always kind of fun. So you know, we'll see how that goes. But uh, moving on, WandaVision, which is also supposed to start streaming on Disney Plus in 2020. That's supposed to be like a weird uh, show that it stars Scarlet Witch and Vision. And it's supposed to take place like in the 50s. I don't know if she makes some sort of like a pocket dimension or something. People are thinking this is what might lead to like more multiverse stuff in the MCU. But basically it's all about like her and Vision living in like the 50s. And it has like a weird retro like aesthetic to it. Not really sure what to think of it yet, but yeah. That's something coming up, I guess. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, similarly, Loki, it's supposed to come out spring 2021. It's supposed to be a TV show that stars Loki. It's supposed to follow him on all sorts of his weird shenanigans and stuff. So I don't know. Has a very ugly logo, but you know, hopefully it'll be fun. And you know, it'll be nice to see more of Tom Hiddleston because he's a fun guy. So there you go. Uh, I'm gonna skip over Doctor Strange really quick. I'll come back to that one. Uh, what If is supposed to come out summer 2021. It's supposed to be an animated series where basically it's supposed to be just like hypotheticals. Like, you know, like what if Peter Parker didn't become Spider-Man, but he instead became like more of like a Punisher type character where he uses like lethal force as a vigilante. Or, you know, another one is like, what if Captain America actually was a Nazi? And it kind of shows you what would have happened and how like the M uh, the Marvel Universe would have been shaped if he was like one of the bad guys. And so, yeah, I mean, I think that's, that's a fun premise. I think that's kind of cool. I think, you know, these what if stories, it's a fun way of exploring different hypotheticals and shaking things up or whatever. So, you know, hopefully it ends up being a fun show. It definitely sounds like it's a, a good premise and stuff. So we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, Hawkeye, which is supposed to come out fall 2021. We don't really know too much about it yet. All we know is it's supposed to be a show about Hawkeye and I guess him, I guess he takes up like a protege. I mean, I've never heard of her. Her name is Kate Bishop, but I know she's supposed to be some sort of character, you know, in the Marvel comics. And I guess it's about him taking up this protege and doing Hawkeye stuff. So there you go. Uh, Thor Love and Thunder, which is supposed to come out November 5th, 2021. Uh, from what I've heard about it, it's supposed to, uh, star Thor. It's supposed to star Valkyrie. It's supposed to have an appearance by, uh, Jane Foster, who's played by, uh, Natalie Portman. And apparently, I'm not really sure how this works, especially since Thor left with the Guardians of the Galaxy at the end of the last movie. But it has to do something with, uh, Natalie Portman. Like, she becomes Thor. Like, for whatever reason, like, she wields the hammer and I guess she becomes Thor. I don't know if, like, Thor's found to be, like, unworthy and it's supposed to be, like, this adventure of like her being Thor and I guess Valkyrie is looking for I mean I think that said that yeah she is gonna be like the first like uh LGBT plus um 
uh superhero and so now that she's king she's gonna be looking for like a queen you know like she's looking for like a love interest and so like i said i'm not really sure how it's gonna work it seems kind of weird timeline wise especially if thor supposedly left for the guardians of the galaxy but i don't know it's supposed to be uh directed by taika watiti so it's supposed to be more of like a comedy you know like adventure sort of thing but you know sounds interesting we'll see how that plays out And, uh, let's see, Black Widow, which is supposed to come out May 1st, 2020, so that's, like, the next closest, uh, Marvel, like, movie or whatever, basically it's supposed to take place between Civil War and Infinity War, and it's supposed to be a Black Widow movie. I mean, we don't really know too much about it yet, all we know is that where it's supposed to take place, it's rumored that Taskmaster is supposed to be the villain, but I guess we'll have to wait and see, you know? Uh, I know a lot of people are kind of cold about this one, because they think it's kind of weird to have a Black Widow movie at this point, which I do agree, it is kind of weird, but, you know, we'll see, maybe it will lead into something else, but, you know, there's that. And finally, the last thing that I want to talk about is Blade. And Blade is really interesting because basically they announced that Marshala Ali is set to star as Blade. And I think that's a really good pick. I think that's really cool, you know? I think that sounds fun. And yeah, I mean, I don't really know what else to say. I heard that Wesley Snipes actually gave his blessing. He was telling people, like, you know, that, hey, you know, chill. You know, I think he's like a great pick or whatever. And it'll be interesting to see what they do with Blade. You know, hopefully they do the older movies justice because the older movies were pretty interesting. So, you know, there you go. Uh, oh yeah, I skipped over Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. The reason for that is that personally, Personally, out of all the movies they listed, that's the one I'm most excited for. I think that Doctor Strange, like the first one, I thought it was really cool. I think it's really awesome seeing like the whole magic side of the MCU and the title, I think sounds really awesome. I think it really gives like Lovecraftian vibes to it. And with how Doctor Strange deals with magic and cosmic stuff and everything, I'm hoping that it'll be like Doctor Strange going through weird multiverse stuff and dealing with like Lovecraftian stuff. So that's the reason I saved that one for last. That's the one that caught my attention the most. That one is slated for May 7th, 2021. And yeah, it's just supposed to be a movie about Doctor Strange teaming up with Scarlet Witch, doing all sorts of crazy multiverse stuff. And like I said, that's the one I'm excited for the most because I think that sounds really interesting. So there you have it. As I said, if you want to read more about it, the link is in the description below. It talks about all the different movies, shows different clips and stuff, shows the logos, shows some of like the panels and stuff. So if you're interested, it will be in the description below. There you go. Moving on, this next movie story is a weird one for a few reasons. Um, As the title of the article states, Chris Rock's Saw film moves up to May 2020 release date. Now, the reason this is an interesting story is because number one, I didn't even know Chris Rock was making a Saw movie. Number two, I didn't know that there was more Saw movies to be made. You know, I thought that the movies, I thought the series was done. You know, so that was also a surprise to read. And I think it's kind of surprising because when you actually read about it, yeah, I mean, it says that originally the movie was supposed to come out October 23rd, 2020. It's now scheduled to come out May 2020. And the cast for the movie is interesting. It says that, for instance, Samuel L. Jackson is going to come out and he's going to play Chris Rock's father. And Chris Rock is supposed to star as a police detective tasked with investigating a series of, like, murders and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, I don't really know what to think about it, you know? Like, on the one hand, I wish him the best. I'm hoping that it's, like, a good movie, you know? I mean, if he really wants to work on it, I think there's a reason for it. And I hope that, you know, his movie does well. But on the other hand, I don't know. I feel like it's like, you know, because Jordan Peele made a a horror movie and, you know, Jordan Peele has a a background in comedy, I feel like now all the studios are trying to capitalize on that, which I think is really silly, you know? Like, it's not the fact that he's a comedian that made it special, you know? Like, it was an interesting fact, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just being cynical. Maybe, you know, this is only like the second example I've seen, but I just think it's really weird, you know? It just seems really weirdly timed. 
But yeah, only time will tell. Like I said, you know, I wish Chris Rock the best. Hopefully his movie does good. Hopefully he's doing it because it's something he's passionate about. And yeah, hopefully it just doesn't become a trend where every horror studio, you know, they're trying to attach some sort of comedian to it. Because I do think that would get old really quickly. But, you know, like I said, hopefully that doesn't happen. But I don't know. We'll have to wait and see, I guess. Moving on to TV news, this next news story makes me sad because I just covered the first season of this show not that long ago. And even though I don't think it was like the best show in the world, I do think it was like really getting into its rhythm. And I do think later episodes were really good. So yeah, just reading this news story, it, it was kind of disappointing, you know? Um, of course, what I'm talking about is that as the title of the article states, animated comedy Tuca and Birdie canceled by Netflix. Netflix after one season. So that's that's a bummer, you know? Like I watched it, I enjoyed it. Like I said, I don't think it was like the best show in the world, but I think as it progressed, it got better and better. I think that, you know, it was definitely finding its rhythm. And I know that a lot of people loved it more than I did, you know. I I, I know there's some people out there who were calling it like their favorite show of 2019, you know, because they just really felt like, like the themes hit home with them. And it's crazy because I thought for sure this show would get like at least a season two. Like it seemed like a surefire bet. And so hearing that it got canceled is just really lame, you know? Um, I was reading through it. It doesn't really seem like they gave a reason why. Like all they say is like, oh, you know, we really respect and have a lot of admiration for the cast. And we look forward to like, you know, at least having season one on the platform. But yeah, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be canceled. You know, there's no plans to make a season two going forward. And yeah, I don't know. It's just so weird. I, I, I don't know. I guess maybe it was just a little underrated you know like maybe they canceled it because not enough people were watching it i guess but yeah i thought it was disappointing i thought it was kind of sad um i guess the best you can really do is you know if you haven't watched it and you've been curious go watch season one at least and if you enjoy it you know make it vocal that you enjoyed it because you never know you know maybe netflix will change their minds or maybe he can get picked up by a different platform you know i don't know what the likelihood of that is but i guess it could happen but yeah like i said pretty disappointing but i guess it is what it is so there you go Switching over to happier news, if you've been into the new DuckTales series, and if you've been enjoying it, at the very least, it looks like the show is doing really good, and in fact, at San Diego Comic Con, they had a panel where it seems like there's some really exciting stuff coming up. Uh, basically, you know, the link in the description below, there will be like the little trailer so you can watch it yourself. But it looks like for part of season two, uh, as the uh, title of the article states, it looks like they're doing a Disney afternoon reunion. Uh, by that, I mean that back in the 90s, there was like a channel block on Disney called Disney Afternoon. And basically, it was a block of a bunch of Disney cartoons. There was uh, DuckTales, Tailspin, I want to say Goof Troop. Uh, Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers, you know, a whole bunch of stuff like that. You know, I'm not sure which ones are part of the block, but I know all of them, you know, were kind of like tied into that. And sure enough, if you watch the trailer for season two, it looks like they're going to have some sort of like a crossover event sort of thing where all these characters are going to show up in DuckTales, you know? Like if you look at the poster that's right under the trailer, uh, it shows, you know, we got the rest rescue rangers they're driving like a little uh airplane they're like in the bottom corner darkwing duck is hanging out like on the left side of the poster uh goofy dressed as his goof troop outfit he's like in the middle towards the right side uh we got the plane from tailspin at the top and we can see that molly and kit from uh, Tailspin, it looks like they're coming out again and they're like a little older this time. So yeah, it just looks really cool because based on the trailer and based on like the poster, it looks like basically uh, Scrooge's longtime arch nemesis whose name I admit I'm forgetting right now, it looks like he's forming like his own like evil league using different, you know, uh, villains 
from like DuckTales lore. And it looks like he's making his own team. And what I'm guessing is that in order to like, you know, help fight this evil team, I guess we might have all these past characters make appearances to help out, you know, Scrooge McDuck and family. And so I don't know. I mean, if you're a fan of like the new DuckTales, I I think that's really exciting. Even if you're not that huge of a fan of the new DuckTales, but if you have some nostalgia for all of those old shows, I think seeing all these characters appear in the new series, I think that still sounds really fun. And yeah, I mean, all I can really say is that hopefully season two continues to be really good and hopefully all the appearances by the characters are fun, you know? But yeah, I thought that was really fun. When I saw that, I was like, damn, that's a pretty good crossover. And so yeah, if you're interested, like I said, I'd suggest checking out the uh, the trailer and the poster because it sounds like some fun stuff coming up. So I'd keep an eye out for that. Finally, when it comes to anime news, this is something that I alluded to a little bit earlier when I was talking about Fire Force, but yeah, um... I don't know, I don't really know how to address this, but I don't know how many of you know, but about like a week, maybe a week and a half ago, uh, a animation studio called Kyoto Animation, they were the victims of arson. And yeah, it was like a really terrible arson where apparently this like 41 year old guy, he like broke into the building and he like lit everything on fire using gasoline. And I don't know, he had some sort of mental issues going on. It led to the death. Yeah, it says right here, 34 different people and injured 34 others. And yeah, it's unfortunate because, you know, people died, people got injured. I know a lot of their work of like the animation studio it all went up in flames so i know a lot of their shows and stuff you know might get delayed in the future so like that really sucks and i don't know i mean the whole thing's really sad so i just kind of want to touch upon that briefly and say that hey you know if you can find it like in your heart if you have the resources if you're a fan of anime you know if you can donate to the studio to like help them out and help out the families i think that'd be really nice And, you know, that aside, you know, like I said, um, Fire Force was back after a short hiatus. And that ties into the article where it says, you know, Fire Force anime resumes broadcast with third episode on Friday. And basically the reason that the show was like put on hold for a while is because, you know, they wanted to do it out of respect because of the Kyoto animation arson or whatever. Like they thought it would be in bad taste that when that had just happened to have like their anime featuring like fires and bad guys causing fires and stuff, you know? And so that's why they took that break for like a week or two or whatever. And unfortunately, I don't see this anywhere. Like I've been looking for like an official source for it, but I saw someone say over on Reddit that they had seen somewhere that going forward, Fire Force might even alter, um, like the fires and like the way the stuff looks because, you know, because of the huge fire that happened and because, you know, out of respect for it, I mean, they feel like it's a sensitive issue. So I had read somewhere that they might alter some stuff. Like it's not exactly censoring, but it's, it's, you know, like I said, uh, altering some stuff, I guess, because some of it just hits really close to home to what happened to the animation studio. So yeah, I mean, we'll have to see if that's true. Like I said, I can't really find an official source on that, but yeah, you know, I just, I don't know. I just want to talk about that because i think it's a really sad thing that happened i think it's a shame that so many people died and got injured and that i don't know it's just really terrible and yeah i mean i just want to make it aware to all of you that that happened and yeah i mean the anime is back now but you know if you're someone who maybe watches anime maybe you've watched the other episodes you know because of my recommendation and you're wondering why it hadn't come out you know, now you know. It's because they were doing it, you know, out of respect for what happened. So, yeah, I mean, it's a sad story. It's an unfortunate story. And yeah, hopefully in the future, you know, they can prevent this and this won't happen again. But yeah, kind of a bummer to end on for the news week. But I just wanted to tell you guys about it because I do think that it was like an important story, you know? Alrighty, guys. And with that being said, that brings us to the end of another news week. As usual, you know, hopefully there was something entertaining or informative, hopefully something that you guys are interested in and you want to read more about. Uh, As I said before, you know, sorry for ending it on kind of a bit of a bummer, 
you know? But I just thought that it was a very, like, important story that I really, like, wanted to touch upon. And, you know, as I said earlier, if you can find it in your heart, if you have the resources, you know, please donate to Kyoto Animations. I'm sure that they're really hurting right now, you know? If not, at least, you know, send them your best wishes, that sort of thing. And, yeah, I mean, I know it's kind of a dark story. So in order to t- to kind of, you know, shift gears over to something more positive, uh, let's go to the last segment of the podcast which is the content creator spotlight and sure enough the content creator for this week is a channel that i've thought about covering for a few weeks now because i think they are a very fun very light-hearted very wholesome channel and i am of course talking about fun in all and fun in all currently sitting at 1.2 thousand subscribers it's run by two girls called queenie and i'm sorry if i say the next name wrong kavya i think that's how you say her name kavya and queenie and kavya are two sisters that run the channel and sometimes you know they do show like their little baby sister and stuff but mostly it's the two of them and yeah they're like a channel that does quite a few things but i think they have like some really fun content Uh, For instance, they do a lot of recipes, just reading through like the list of videos they've done of like recipes recently. Uh, They made authentic roasted tomato salsa. They made cream cheese tortilla roll ups and they made hummus. So those are all like, trust me, I watched the recipes. They all look really good. They look really legit and they're like really detailed. So like, that's really fun. Uh, They do a lot of videos where they do like brain teasers and like riddles and like jokes and that sort of thing. Those are always like really fun, you know? So I would say check those out. Uh, And they also do... Like stuff where I guess you can say like they're kind of on site doing different activities. Like not too long ago, you know, during the 4th of July, they had a little video where it showed them celebrating, you know, the 4th of July and there was like fireworks and stuff. Uh, They have another video not that long before that. I'm trying to look for it where they did an under the sea themed party and they actually show how they did like all the do it yourself stuff. To like make the party theme. And like that was really nice. Uh, They have another video where they went ice skating. And they were teaching their like baby sister how to ice skate. And so yeah. I mean like it's a mix of stuff. But as I said. I think it's really worth checking out. Because I just think that it's like really wholesome. And like really nice. And it's like a very positive channel. You know. But yeah I've been following them for a while. I think they have very fun content. And they're always like really supportive too. They're always leaving likes and comments on my videos so i really appreciate that so yeah fun and all if you guys are listening to this i think you guys are great i think it's nice how you guys are like very positive very energetic very like wholesome and like family friendly i think that's really nice i think the content you guys make i think you guys do like a lot of really good stuff like those recipes top notch and so yeah keep up the work good work guys i wish you the best you guys are currently at 1.2 thousand hope you get many more And yeah, for anyone else listening, as always, check them out, give them some likes, give them some comments, maybe even subscribe. I think that you're doing some really good stuff. So I hope you guys will check them out. And you know, as I always say, if you do, give them some love and you know, tell them that wannabe reviewer sent you. So there you go. Alrighty, and with that being said, that brings us to the end of another podcast. That is one more in the bag. And yeah, as usual, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Hopefully you guys got something out of it, whether it was me talking about anime, you know, Stranger Things, my thoughts on it, Digimon Cyber Sleuth, how I recommend it, one of the new stories, my introduction to you guys to fun and all. You know, hopefully there was something you guys enjoyed, something that made this podcast worthwhile, you know? Uh, to wrap up, as always, my name is Nwana Wannabe Reviewer. I am the host of this podcast, which is available on all sorts of platforms. And please, guys, if you're listening to this on our platform, because I do see that there's people listening, if you've made it to the end of the podcast, please leave some sort of comment. Let me know what you think, because, you know, I feel like only YouTube people really tell me what they think. But if you're listening to this on another, you know, platform, give me your thoughts, you know, I'd really appreciate it.
Uh, that aside, you can also catch me on social media, such as Twitter and Instagram, uh, twitch.tv, where I admit I've been wanting to stream and I haven't gotten into it. So hopefully I do that sometime soon. And yeah, you know, I hope you guys have a wonderful week. I will try to be back here next week for podcast number 41. But until then, I hope you guys are good. Hopefully you guys have a wonderful week. And yeah, my name is M. Wannabe Reviewer, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you.